right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined from Chicago in Illinois by Ryan Staley. How are you doing, Ryan? Good, man. Really good. I'm waving for those of you that are watching. So uh... Absolutely. <laughs> and uh, Ryan is the founder and CEO of Whale Boss, where he helps technology founders grow from one to 30 million through the principles he used to achieve the same results. Personally, Ryan has taught over, over 800 uh, chief revenue officers, VPs, or leaders, his proprietary enterprise sales frameworks for startups and companies like Google, Amazon Web Services, Stripe, Salesforce, Uber, etc. And what we're going to talk about today is this interesting subject, leveraging chat GPT and AI to explode your SaaS sales and marketing growth. So Ryan, let's just dive straight into it, right? There is so much noise and hype and AI is just taking over everything. It's going to take over sales. Um, it's going to make everything wonderful and the tools are coming out. What, what's the reality? Yeah, Matt. So uh, I think it is not, not to jump on the hype train, but um, so here, let me take a step back. So it, this all kind of started. So I interview, I, I have a, a podcast called The Scale Up Show where I interview SaaS CEOs. And so I get a lot of early exposure to what's happening in tech, how it's affecting people and organizations, and then kind of take it from there. And so one of the things that happened is one of my guests, this was last year, I think it was around the November timeframe. His name is Chris Savage. He's from Wistia. And he's just like, hey, have you heard of Dolly before? And I'm like, no, what's Dolly? And he's like, basically you type in a couple words and it creates a picture from those words in almost real time. And I'm like, wow, that's, that's amazing. So I decided to play with it and work with my kids on it. And I, basically then that's owned by OpenAI, which has ChatGPT. And so from there, I started to get just deeply immersed into the whole AI ChatGPT world and just became fascinated with, with what I discovered. Now, along the way of that, I started to really, really follow uh, smart people who have been working on this for a long time. And I also started following people that have either billion dollar company valuations in the space or are billionaires in itself, just as a byproduct of it, right? And one of the things that they kept saying, and this isn't just like people like Bill Gates, this is a wide range of different folks, is this is going to be the single biggest change in humanity that we've ever experienced. So um, not to scare anybody, but there's going to be some massive changes. I see it already. and. Um, so I would definitely, definitely invest into it. Yeah. So then how can, when people are looking at it, say particularly from a sales stack, technology stack point of view, when you're looking at it, um, you know, there's a lot of obviously promises being made and a lot of people are sort of saying like, oh, this will do all the sales stuff for you and you'll just have to come in at the end, which we know is it's not, not true. But so tell me from what you've seen so far, where do you think the true utility of AI is going to be for sales? Yeah, so... It all depends on the role, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll give you an example from a tactical perspective, and then I'll give you an example more from an executive or, or leadership perspective, right? So I'll give you kind of both ends of the spectrum from yeah. like micro to macro. If, if, does that sound like it'd be good? That sounds good. Okay, cool. So if you look at it from a micro perspective, because I've spent a lot of time on it and really trying to identify use cases. And so there's use cases all over the board, right? And a lot of it, like, why I love it so much is because I'm an outcome driven person, right? And so you could tell it the outcome you want. And then if you know how to talk to it the right way, it'll create that outcome for you, which is like absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. So like one of the unique things that, that I've done or some of the unique things on a tactical perspective are um, one of my clients was trying to hire someone. And so I created an entire job description, flow for the interview plot process, and everything else for an SDR within probably 10 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. um, right? On top of it too, if you wanted to create a cold outbound email sequence, I reverse engineered what are the, the, the top KPIs that each C-level executive are evaluated on, um, what are their focus areas in a down market, and then what are areas in which, you know, we could satisfy those challenges, right? And then even emotionally how they feel. Right. Did all that, attached a sequence to it, and created that in 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So why that's critical is because that level of acumen and the information it spit out was really good. That level of acumen you would need to do usually requires 
an extensive amount of experience in terms of selling to those people or working with those people, A, but B, also insight in terms of how to structure a sequence and then, you know, integrate a framework into it. That takes a while to put together. Yeah. And so that's a tactical approach on why I loved it because it's something that might have taken hours and I could do it in minutes. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. No, I think just just on uh, on the tactical there, I think that is 100% correct. I think anything that can get rid of time consuming tasks or low value or rote, um, rote and repetitive tasks and allowing the salesperson to focus on more high value activities. I think those, those are absolutely like great, great, uh, great steps forward. Yeah. I, I love, I mean, you nailed it right there. And, and here's, here's another example, which is a simple, anybody could use it, whether you're an entrepreneur or your sales rep or anything like, let's say for example, now you gotta be careful because, it is public data, right? So you, you don't want to put your client data on there unless you have like a private session that, that you're operating under. Uh, so, but something you could really do that, that I thought was cool is for example, let's say you are a rep or you're a manager and you're part of a company. And what you could do is you could identify the top, let's say 10 or 20 companies mm -hmm. in your that you sold as customers, right? Don't put any customer data, nothing about revenue or anything, just the company names. Okay. One of the things that you could do is really, that, that I think is amazing is you could say, Hey, you know, what of these 20 companies, what are the top commonalities between all these companies? Um, what's the prevailing verticals or industries they are in? And then what are areas that are trends that, that exist within all these companies across these different organizations. And so I did that. Um, and it was really, really surprising because what it did is it spit out um, five different kind of underlying trends of, of things that didn't come to the top of my mind. And I've done this a lot. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's one aspect. And then the second aspect is I'm like, OK, create 20 because it, it split it up into three different industries. And I go, OK, split of those 20 companies and those three industries provide 20 lookalike companies for each one of those industries that mirror the exact profile that they have. Mm -hmm. And then it replicated it and created those companies. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was something that it did literally in minutes. They would take a lot of research and time if I was trying to attract or target new Right. Companies. Yeah. And what so, just just out of interest, what, what were you using when you did that? Just chat GPT. Just chat G okay. Yeah. And so so that's on the tactical side. So moving over to the management side now, and and this is a little experiment because I, I basically blocked off an hour and a half every day. Uh, to, to, to do this and experiment with AI because I want to become a master of it, right? So I've been doing this for a while. And so I'm like, all right, you know, one of my goals is like, how can I turn a day's worth of work and get it done in like less than 30 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. So that that's kind of like how I approach right. it. And one of the use cases I saw that was really cool is I created a compensation plan for an entire team. The KPIs in terms of how to evaluate them on like a daily, weekly, monthly, and annual basis, a management structure, okay, uh, a recruiting profile, and then on top of it too, the actual tech stack that they need to use for only $236 a month if they bought all the, the tech stack pieces and had to prioritize from like mm -hmm. best to worst and did all that in like 23 minutes. Wow. So, and, and I look, here's the thing, like, I understand, like, I've been specifically experimenting with my own domain expertise yes. because I've been in the space for 25 years and I've also helped SaaS companies grow their business with. So like I'm doing it in a domain that I know, so I could value check the data to make sure it's just not BS. Right. 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 That's another example. Yeah. And then from, um, you know, moving more to the macro, uh, the macro end of things, like for executives and people running companies, what, what, what are some of the things that they should be considering? Yeah. So uh, I've looked at this as well and, I, and I'm, it depends on the size, right? But what I would say is overall, like someone needs to understand this and own this, right? So there's a technical component, but then there's a business use case component. So if it were me, my recommendation, like, let's say I was running a revenue org, John, mm. you know what I mean? Like if I was running a revenue org, this is yep. how I would approach it. I would basically assign um, my, my leadership team, uh, everybody that reported to me, as well as every individual, I would first of all, start and show them maybe four or five different use cases of what's possible. Right. And I would, I would cut it up over maybe video 
not video, but maybe um, like a, a, a graphic like mid journey, right? Which is a very mm -hmm. easy, you put an input, it spits out pictures and then chat GPT. I would keep it simple, but I would show them possibilities of, of what others have done with it right. and right. show some amazing use cases. Cause that's, that's the starting point. Number one is like, Hey, what's even possible with this stuff, right? Step two is I would assign them to identify how they could integrate this into what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis to either speed up the rate in which they do the work, improve mm -hmm. the quality, or basically um, reduce their time, become more productive. Okay. And then I would have a, a weekly session with the team where everybody shared their best practices uh, in my department. And then I would also do the same thing organizationally as well. Mm -hmm. Because if you do that, what's going to happen is those, those effects that I talked to you about where you're doing 30 minutes of mm -hmm. work into, you know, or eight hours of work in 30 minutes, that's going to be a compounding effect. So basically that's a really good way to have the entire organization, like truly understand and execute and implement it while also almost crowdsourcing the best of the best that you can cross pollinate across different departments. So that's kind of how I would. Yeah. It. And, I, and I think that's a really good approach because one of the things, as you said, is, I mean, you're at least you're co-opting everybody, but also you're avoiding, because I think what's happening in a lot of organizations now is that individuals are going off and finding tools and you'll always get early adopters and that, but you could end up in a wild west of your teams using a whole array of tools and no commonalities and no shit. And so, yeah. I mean, finding, finding, doing research, finding them, then, then figuring out best practice, figuring out what works, and then trying to systematize it is, is the, the right way to go. Because otherwise, literally, you could just end up with people just leveraging tools all over the place. Yeah, you nailed it, man. I mean, you nailed it, John. Yeah. I mean, so, like, and that's, that's only just, like, on the use yeah. side, right? You're talking tech. There's ways where you could leverage this for data and other purposes, too. But as if you look at it from the workforce perspective, this is where I see a lot of folks missing because they're so focused on integrating into the product. Mm -hmm. They're not focused on their team using it. I'm talking to tech companies that are 10 million, 15 million, 20 million, 100 million, and they're not doing anything with it, right? I've talked to some of the most successful people that I know that have ownership in public sports teams, right? right? And they're not, they're not even aware of it. So I'm like, this is a freight train that's coming down the tracks that you have to be aware of. Otherwise... Uh, you're going to get massively disrupted. Yeah, because I mean, if you think about it, even say the smartphone is the la you know is the the last major disruption that came out of kind of nowhere. Even that took a number of years to really um, embed. I mean, if you like, I mean, the Europeans. I'm originally from Ireland, from Europe, but Europeans were texting long before the Americans were. It was, yeah. Um, but I feel like AI is just, it, that's a different story altogether. It's not going to be years of, of it gradually. It's, it's, as you said, it's a freight train and it's here. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's why it's so disruptive because we're scaling our technology faster than we're, we're ba basically able to emotionally mm -hmm. handle it. And it's going to be disruptive in positive ways. And then there's going to be negative outputs from it too. I, I think like, for example, I'll give you this, and, and this is an intentional, but like I was using, looking at using a third party for my content, mm -hmm. right? To create content, um, or I should say repurpose my content with video editing. Something you think yeah. would be um, a little more on the complex side, right? Might've cost 600 sure. bucks a month. And it would take me 24 hours to get a video mm -hmm. back. So I found a tool that can do just as good of a job, um, provide more output in 15 minutes, for less than fifty dollars, right. so basically one tenth the amount of, you know, cost and less time that I could leverage. So there's going to be industries like that that are completely disrupted if people aren't aware of of like how to pinpoint those areas. Yeah, you. and it's interesting you say that. I actually was at a conference a few weeks ago. And um, in the exhibit hall, they had a number of companies who did what you're just saying in terms of, um, you know, we'll do your content for you. We'll do all of this. You do your blogs, outsource it all. Uh, however, one of the opening sessions at the conference was talking about AI and chat, chat, chat DVD and how people were using it for content. And it was almost, I, I felt bad because it was almost real time, these businesses nobody was interested anymore. Everybody was thinking, oh, you mean I can do this cheap and free using these tools? So it was like, I mean, there, there's talk about change. There's a, there, there, are, there were vendors who literally, their whole investment in going there went down at the minute everybody started talking about chat GPT. Yeah, I mean, that sucks. 
um, mm -hmm. for them. However, it's a great opportunity too, right? Because uh, like what what I think it could do, and this is especially for the sales mm -hmm. world, and I'm really passionate about it, is like I think if 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 people just stay their ground and don't make the change, don't adjust to it, and don't really embrace it, they'll get yeah. replaced. Like without a doubt, in my mind, they will get replaced either by someone who's doing twice as much work or literally by a machine. Like there's, I think low end sales processes mm -hmm. and low end sales capabilities based on what technology I've seen already can literally get replaced um, without a doubt. Like on the upper end of the chain, it's going to be a lot more complicated because of the orchestration mm -hmm. of emotions and, and relationships across multiple stakeholders. I think there's a little more stability there. However, like, so that's just on the sales side, right? And then you talk some of this content stuff, copywriting, all those other areas. I mean, those areas can get disrupted really, really fast. Yeah. And, and just kind of coming back to what you just said there, um, you know, a, a moment ago is um, I, I think uh, at the, at the low end, because here's the thing about it, a lot of SaaS companies, right? One of the problems that they have is they're very replaceable because they have no relationship they have a lot of subscribers and stuff but they have no relationship really with with the end user i mean with just tools we use i've never ever heard from the companies that you know they've never reached out in any fashion um, whatsoever and i think and that makes it very easy to swap you have no you know you you change for a, a product that does the same thing that's a dollar cheaper or whatever i think there's a great opportunity for companies like that to start figuring out okay how can we build a, a more sticky and if you like a more personalized experience at the higher end as you said yeah hopefully the ai can help alleviate a lot of the issues and make it more um efficient and get rid of as you said rote and routine tasks so that says people can operate at an even higher level at even more consultative level if you like yeah totally totally agree on that so um i think like i don't know I'm torn on it. I mean, part of the reason why I got so deep into this is because it, it, to be honest with you, originally when I started seeing what it could do, scared the shit yeah. out of me. Right. Like, I'm like, this is going to be such a change. And I'm like, okay, I could either, I could run, I could run towards it or I could run away from it and bury my head in the sand. And I know that, you know, it's like, it's, it's like kind of what Morpheus says in matrix, you know, take the red, blue, red pill or the blue mm -hmm. pill. Right. Um, I rather know what's going on and attack it and help others and find ways where, you know, because they could transform what they're doing and the experience that they provide for customers. And I, I think this could be a way to do it because think about it, like, you know, the awesome thing about it, John, is like if, if there's so much like crappy, tactical, mm. soul sucking minutia that you don't have to do, you could stare more that time, energy and towards connecting with people at a human level and really, really understanding, you know, what they need, what they want. And, and what's driving them versus, um, you know, like that's the thing too. People don't think about how much task switching right. sales people have. Um, you know, they have to prospect, they have to build relationships, they have to, they have to be a data entry person, they have to be a strategic thinker. There's so many different components to it. And ideally, you know, if you master this, I think it could cut out a lot of that minutiae and crap and elevate everybody, not just from a, a time area, but from an attention. Yeah, aspect. no. Um, I really like what you just touched on there is that is that allowing for that human element, because I think that is the critical piece, because I think it's funny because I think we're going two roads, you know, at the same time and they're diverging slightly. One is going down the technology, AI, all of that and hands off. The other one is the craving for human interaction. So what you, you just outlined there, I think is great. And you can combine, if you like, or use both. You can use the technology to allow you to have more time to build. The relationships and that's what people really crave today and, and you're never going to build trust without building re real solid relationships yep i think you nailed yeah, it perfect well listen ryan this has been great all of ryan's information is going to be below this video but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about you and your company yeah man so uh i am the founder and ceo of whale boss i, I help SaaS companies scale their revenue um i have been hyper passionate about the ai piece and so uh, you could follow my content either on the Scale Up Show, which is a podcast, or in written form on LinkedIn. Uh, that's where you could find me, either of those two places, audio or on LinkedIn. And um, what I could do to John yeah. is like, I have a whole like prompt sequence 
as well as the output of like how to sell or market to any C level executive in minutes. Um, it's it's on the website www.ai4revenue.com forward slash cc, uh, and that'll give you a, a free resource that you could have. Uh, so yeah, thanks Absolutely. for listening. Well, I, I encourage you to go check it out, and I encourage you to. Uh, go and do do some homework. You know, check out Ryan's uh, podcast and all the assets he has as well. Because as we said, this is a freight train; it ain't got any brakes that we can tell right now. So uh, you better jump on board or figure out at least how to use it effectively right now. Don't get overwhelmed. Like, start small. I think that's all. The- start small. Definitely. <laughs> all right. Well, listen. Thanks, Ryan. Thank you for watching and listening. We'll see you all again soon.